with thanks to my Patreons, Karos Machinsky and Uncle Chop Chop. Thank you for supporting the channel. Let's say you were forced to play bass in a pop punk band by your bandmates, as has usually been the case. How about you're new to the bass guitar and you want to play pop punk? Or you're in a cover band, but you've never actually listened to pop punk. What gear and equipment would you need to get that bubblegum punk pop sound? If you want to sound like Blink-182, Green Day or The Offspring, then this is the video for you. If you would ask me what gear I would include in a pop punk based starter pack, this is what I would share. We will be looking at the bass guitars, the amplifiers, the strings, the effects pedals, and of course, the bands you should be listening to. Let's start with the bands. What do we mean when we say pop punk? Pop punk has its origins as far back as the 1970s and has had varied levels of success since then. I will be differentiating between pop punk and punk rock. Yes, there is a ton of crossover between these two genres, but we can have a look at punk rock specifically another time. For the purpose of this video, when I say pop punk, I am referring to the bands with a radio friendly veneer to their music, but maintain much of the speed and attitude of classic punk rock. Ergo, pop punk. We can say punk rock has a lot more grrr and attitude, while pop punk is not as threatening. More specifically, we will be reflecting over the pop punk bands that brought the biggest cultural and musical changes during the mid 1990s to the early 2000s. Remember, this is a pop punk based starter kit. I will be making sweeping generalizations and assumptions about the genre at large, so don't get offended. Some of you are not going to like this, but if there's a pro pop punk based starter kit you want to see, let me know who or what you would include in that in the comments down below. Okay. Who are we talking about? The top three are pop punk. Blink-182 no doubt has had the biggest cultural impact on fashion and music in the name of pop punk. Without a doubt, they set the trends. Their most successful albums of the period are of course, Enema of the State and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Next up is Green Day who have had far more record sales than Blink and should take top spot for record sales alone. Green Day walked so Blink-182 could run. The most famous album of Green Day's is Dookie, followed by the more culturally accepted American Idiot. Third spot is a bit of a difficult one. You can play it by album sales or cultural impact, but you can't have it both ways. Culturally, I'd like to put The Offspring or Sum 41. By album sales, however, you have no doubt an Avril Lavigne. Hell, throw in Hayley Williams from Paramore in the latter half of the 2000s. All very similar, competent female fronted bands who make extremely catchy, popular punk tunes. In my opinion, Gwen Stefani, Avril Lavigne and Hayley Williams opened up pop punk to a new audience of teenage girls and generously helped move the cultural needle, which was sorely needed in my opinion, as all the boys wanted to talk about was I f***ed your mom and dick jokes. Honorable mentions to name a select few include Alkaline Trio, Good Charlotte, AFI, Bowling for Soup and Fall Out Boy. All have had major success in their own way and are required listening. Moving on to gear, what bases would you expect to see in pop punk? Nine times out of 10, most pop punk bands will play a Fender P bass. Everybody knows the P stands for punk. That's a joke, it stands for poor. Look at Blink-182, The Offspring, Green Day, Sum 41, or Alkaline Trio to name a few. Pop punk should be synonymous with precision basses. If you want to sound authentic, get a precision bass. Why would this be? Well, there's no one reason. You can look as far back as the pop punk grandfathers, the Ramones and the Sex Pistols using the Arctic white precisions. It just so happened to become the fashionable instrument in punk. Everyone had one. Alternatively, precision basses are pretty affordable. Always have been. They are very simple instruments to mass produce, copy or obtain. Even today, a precision bass of questionable quality can be bought from as little as $99. If you really want to get into the weeds, punk and by extension pop punk has always been a genre about a lifestyle and an attitude about sticking it to the man. Punks don't want to be pretty and popular. And if you brought a beautiful boutique expensive bass to a punk rock band, you would certainly receive ridicule. Quite right too. Sam Wise, this goes straight back to my precision versus jazz bass video, which the old dinosaurs on talk bass love waxing lyrical about. The split coil pickup has a unique round bouncy tone that is unlike any other bass. It happens to sit very well in a pop punk mix as the guitarists are typically thinner and overdriven rather than distorted, which would typically drown out the bass. This is good for bassists. For clear precision bass examples, have a listen to some 41's In Too Deep, The Offspring's Bad Habit, or Come Out and Play, Blink-182's What's My Age Again, or finally Green Day's Minority. 
Like I said, precisions are very simple instruments that work in the hands of beginners and professionals alike. After just 10 minutes and learning three notes, you can learn pop punk. It's that easy. It's extremely difficult to make a good precision bass sound bad. Take a look at my precision versus jazz bass video for more info. Can I use other basses? Well, yes and no. Ultimately, the decision lies with you. If you want to stay true to an authentic pop punk sound and aesthetic, any Fender model bass will do. Jazz, Jaguar, Mustang, Telecaster. Again, most pop punk bands will use Fender basses. They look the part and still keep that classic sound more often than not. If you're anything like me and find Fender basses a little bit, eh, you'll want to find something else. But be warned, if you don't play the standard P or J setup, you are quickly veering out of the realms of the starter kit and true authentic pop punk sound. Stick to passive four strings and either precision or precision jazz setups. Look at Ibanez Talman, Jackson Spectra, Orange O-Bass, Yamaha BBs, Music Man Cutlass, ESP or LTD PJs if you want something more unique. Avoid active basses, soap bar pickups, and specialty humbuckers like Thunderbirds, Hoffners, SGs, Rickenbackers, or Stingrays. Brilliant basses in their own right, but not authentic to pop punk. Lastly, if you are going down a precision bass route, keep in mind the most authentic pop punk sound comes from a good quality friend of precision, not a squire or cheapo precision. In my opinion, there is a huge improvement of tone from the entry level precisions right up to the Fender flagship models. If you do have a question of precision already, I would recommend upgrading the pickup to something a bit more traditional, like a Fender Yosemite set, or something beefy, like a Seymour Duncan Quarter Pound set. Changing the pickups on your bass is often the easiest and cheapest way to upgrade it. Amplifiers are almost as important as the bass used. There is only really one amplifier combo you will see on Pop Punk, and that is the Ampeg SVT specifically the original SVT V4B or conventional model like the SVT CL. The tonal character of pop punk bass in almost all circumstances is down to a precision bass and Ampeg SVT. This is partially down to a successful formula. Well, the Ramones, Bad Religion and Green Day used it, I should too. Every pop punk player has used Ampeg. The big bands always have them. What Defender Precision does for the bass, the Ampeg SVT does for amplifiers. It sounds brilliant. It's remarkable. It's probably used on every record across every genre you can think of. It's ubiquitous and found in studios and live settings across the world. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Ampeg sound, generally speaking, is a thick lower to mid range with some exaggeration on the top end. Call it clicky. The Ampeg sounds like a rebellious teenager playing bass. Alternatively, you could look at the Fender Bassman amplifiers and cabs. They generally have cleaner amplifiers and are more faithful to what your bass should sound like. Call it raw bass power. Lastly, you could consider Galley and Kruger. The tone could be somewhere in the middle of the previous two. A thick, solid state tone, faithful to your bass, but with its own natural character that is not very clicky. Avoid amplifiers like Mesa Boogie, Orange or Dark Glass. All very good amplifiers, but not authentic to pop punk. Amplifiers like these could move away from pop punk and into darker metal genres, removing the brightness. Strings are pretty straightforward. For this starter kit, I would simply recommend Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. More often than not, you will want light gauge strings somewhere between 40 and 100 or mediums 45 to 105. It's unusual to use anything heavier than 105 for pop punk, but as always with strings, it's best you try for yourself. Lighter strings are physically easier to pluck and give the music a sense of airiness and urgency. Heavier strings will have a thicker fundamental note, but with the added perception of slowing down the music. In terms of brands, almost every pop punk band uses Ernie Ball, likely the most popular string brand on the planet. Everybody uses them. In my opinion, fantastic feel and sound, but they typically die out much quicker than their competitors. The whole strings debate could be a video in and of itself. Everyone you meet will have an opinion one way or the other, what you should use, what you shouldn't use. I wholly recommend you go out and try as many string sets as possible to find something you love and enjoy. Strings are the easiest component of your sound you can change and I highly encourage you to do so. However, if you want pop punk authenticity, trust me, it's the super slinkies. If you're boycotting Ernie Ball for some reason, alternatively, have a look at the Roto Sound Swing Bass Set. They provide for a large roster of popular players and make excellent strings my personal favorites. It's difficult to say which string brand you should avoid playing. But I would say, avoid any and all signature artist series or glow-in-the-dark sets. You don't need them. 
and stay away from flat wounds. That just ain't punk at all, trust me. Last word on strings is tuning. Tuning is an artistic choice, however, authentic pop punk will be tuned to E standard. Nine times out of ten, bands record in E standard and play an E flat live. This makes the vocalist's life a little bit easier and could serve the purpose of making the song slightly darker with a slight looseness on the strings for you. If you really want to push the envelope, try playing in drop D. This also leans into effects pedals and the overall sound of pop punk. The guitarists are more than likely using overdrive rather than distortion, which provides the bass more opportunity to be heard within the sonic spectrum. Effects pedals for pop punk bassists aren't really a staple of the genre. Most bassists will create their tone by way of their pickups, amplifiers, or way of play. The drive or the slight bit of grip will come from that amplifier alone. Call it vanilla, if you like. Of course, there are exceptions, and just like the guitarists, bassists can lean into overdrive for a bit more bite during the songs. Honestly, most overdrives all serve a very similar purpose with very little difference between them. Just like the strings argument, you would need to find a flavor or a style that works for you. But if we stick with pop punk authenticity, I would suggest something very mild. Like your boss ODB3, Beringer BOD, Ibanez Tube Screamer, or perhaps a Sans Amp bass driver. Even one of those affordable overseas overdrives, Joyo, Donna, are fair contenders. Fuzz pedals are a great alternative when used in moderation. They provide a unique sound that really flavors a song and is unusual. Again, tons of fuzz pedals on the market. Go with something tried and tested, like a big muff from Electro Harmonics or your overseas reproductions. Distortion pedals like your DS1s are a rare option, but can be quite harsh given the overall style of the genre. They also tend to suck out the bottom end of your tone and I would suggest avoiding them. Other effects which could be used include a chorus, delay, phaser or flanger, typically used in moderation like your middle eights or your bridges. Effects on bass are more of a tonal emphasis rather than always on like you find in metal. One more item to mention is plectrum choice. Not a massive deal overall, but it does help tie your sound together. Pop punk bass is only played with plectrum. There is no deviation to finger style play or slapping. Plectrum only. Players will be expected to use Tortex plectrums, from 0.50 mil to 0.88 at the most. The lighter the plectrum size, the more snappy your tone will be and faster to play. Heavier picks require more stamina to play, but make your sound dynamically louder. Experiment to find what feels most comfortable for you and sounds best. Putting those constituent parts together, if you had a pop punk gig tonight, here is what your bass starter kit would include. You will be playing a Fender Precision and perhaps a Fender Jazz as a backup. Turn to E standard both strung up with Ernie Ball Super Slinkies, 40 to 100, and strumming using a 0.73 Tortex Plectrum. This is amplified by an Ampeg SBT Seagal with matching 8x10 cabinet, running into a Boss ODB3 and perhaps Boss CEB Bass Chorus, which is turned on when you really want to make a statement. It's as easy as that. Ironically, for all of the rebellious attitudes Pop Punk has, the bass equipment used during its apex was incredibly simple and rigid. As I've mentioned earlier, there was a formula and everybody used it, because that's what sold records. The constraints and choices ease up when you start talking about punk rock, and punk more specifically, but this is something we could talk about another time. A full list of the starter kits and any alternatives will be linked in the description. And if there's a bass starter kit you want to see on this channel, you let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.